Hi, this is Charlie from Vintage Speed. Today we're going to show you, this is going to be part of a three or four part series on the Holly 94 carburetor series. And we're going to, today's going to be the disassembly. So we're going to show you basically how to take these things apart. I usually use a screw gun and uh, just speeds things up a little bit. You want to take the fast idle cam and the linkage rod off and right in here you'll find a little spring and a ball that's your clip that holds your uh, your choke gives you the detent for your choke and this has a spring behind it you take that off and that spring mounts over a little pin right here so there you go take that off and this is your c-clip they call it this is your pump drive you can just pry that right up out some of these pump drives have a have a clip on it. I know the ones I make have a clip, so make sure you look behind. If there's a hairpin clip on there, pull it off before you pry the pump out. Okay, once you get all of that loose, you can go ahead and take the base off. You've got three screws holding your base on. you got the big one in the bottom and the two on top, and it helps if you've got a long screwdriver for this. Pull that choke bracket off. And your base assembly will come off. You pull this screw out and your choke bracket will come off. Alright now here's your power valve using a, using a one inch wrench. Remove the power valve. Okay, now we're going to remove the five top screws. Once your five top screws are removed, slight tap on the top to break the gasket loose and it should come out okay your float pins right here you can generally just push it if it's real short sometimes you have to use a pair of needle nose to grab the end of it pull the float pin out and take out your float here's your needle and seat remove your needle using a wide screwdriver take out the seat assembly. I'm not being too careful with these because these are replaced parts. They're not going to be used again. Okay, and then you can pull the gasket off of that top. Alright, now for a, for a general rebuild, most people don't remove the choke. You can clean the carb and you can leave the choke in. If you need to take the choke out, you're going to have to remove the two choke screws flip the throttle plate out and then the choke will come out. There's also a little small spring right behind that fits right in there. It fits in a slot and it hooks over the arm and that's your retract for your choke spring. So okay for this rebuild we're not going to take the choke out. Uh, usually I do when I'm rebuilding them but I'm, the average guy probably wouldn't be taking them out so that's fine. Alright now you can remove your pump Sometimes them are a little stiff coming out of there, as this one is. As you can see, this carburetor is well worn. I'm going to put a little WD-40 on that to free up that just a little bit. I got a pound of rust out of the bottom of the carburetor. Alright, there's your pump assembly. Your pump comes apart like this. 
you depress the spring, lift the pump shaft out, and then release the spring. This is the little clip that holds the spring on the pump. The pump will be replaced. Now this pump used a Buna rubber cup, which is an old school. Uh, I have new fluorastomer cups for these if you want them. They come in our kits. Okay, now we're going to take the cluster assemblies out. There's a screw here. There's a screw here. There's a screw here. And there's a screw here. These two bridges, on this particular type of cluster, this is what we call the tall cluster. Um, it uses a short bridge and a long bridge. On the other type of cluster, and this, we'll get into this during the assembly, it uses both long bridges. Once those are out, you can just wiggle these cluster bars and pull them out. These are your fuel clusters. And this is your squirter. It also comes out. Now underneath your squirter, there's a check pin. It looks like this, a little brass check pin. Knock it out of there and make sure you get it out. Okay. All right, there we have our bowl assembly completely disassembled. The only thing we've got to take off now is the jet well plugs and remove the main jets. You get to the main jets. By going through the hole. And screw the jets out. We find that uh, a little WD-40 or my preferred rust solvent is a product called PB Blaster. That's, uh, it will free up these loose parts. Occasionally you'll get them where you need to use heat on them, but other than that. All right, now down inside this pump well, there is a clip. And I use a little dental pick. And I reach down inside there and grasp that clip and pull the clip out. The clip looks like this. And once the clip's out, you can tap the carburetor and the little check ball will come out. All right, that bowl assembly is disassembled and ready for cleaning. Okay, on our, uh, on our base assembly, of course, remove your mixture screws. And then we're going to take our throttle plate screws out. That's what we're going to require a real small screwdriver. And sometimes some of these screws, all of the modern carburetors, they put the screws in Loctite. But the, some of the earlier ones, the screws were bratted over on the end. So what you end up with is something that's uh, kind of difficult to... Anyway, you remove these four screws, slip your throttle plates out, and then your shaft will come out, and your base then is ready for reconditioning. All right, um, there's all the parts disassembled. And uh, on our next video, we'll show you the cleaning process and understanding all of the circuits in the carburetor. Um, also, on the end of these clusters here, you have, these are your idle pickup tubes. You need to take these out of the cluster. They just screw out just like that, and they're a needle-type tube. Very small hole in the end. It's imperative that these air bleed holes, the fuel pickup hole, and the cross hole in them, are thoroughly cleaned before, before the carburetor goes back together or it won't run right. So we're going to take this other one out.
Sometimes on these base screws, if you notice on these, they were bratted over. What you can do is you can take a small drill and just dimple it just a little bit. And what it'll do is it'll cut that flange off of the top and then the screw will come out easier. If you should break off a screw, it's not imperative that you worry about it. You're, if you're going to put an extended shaft in it, it doesn't matter if you destroy them taking them out. But if you're not going to put an extended shaft, if you're going back with a stock rebuild, then you can take a number 36 drill and you can drill straight through the screw from the backside, drill straight through and the screw will pop out and then run a 632 tap through the holes and freshen up the holes and then your plates will go right back in. What you want to do before your assembly is, is you want to take, be aware of the way the throttle plate goes in a 94. If you look at a 94 throttle plate, it has a bevel on it. And that bevel is, is made to go um, and if you, I notice these, these, somebody has put these throttle plates in backwards. That bevel should be on the top side right here. And what it does is it lets you uncover the off idle holes or what we call the transfer holes. And they're located right there above the hole where the mixture screw goes. Your idle fuel comes, it's picked up from the well, comes through these tubes and comes up and over the cluster and down and it, it goes down th through these through the holes on the outside here straight down to the bottom of the base and they come out in this hole and this goes down to the the mixture screw which uh, gives you your idle control and the holes that are above that the two holes that are above it are the holes for your off idle circuit now if you'll also notice, and I'm, I'm not sure you can see it, there's another hole right here off to the side. Do you see that hole off to the side? Okay, that's the hole for your ported vacuum. Now, a lot of these carburetors use ported vacuum, and the ported vacuum is comes out on this point. The, the early flatheads, as a matter of fact, all Ford cars from 1944 to 1956 used a vacuum control distributor called a Lodomatic. Um, this is ported vacuum. In other words, when the throttles close, there's very little vacuum on this port. And as you open the throttle, it applies a vacuum signal to this, which advances your distributor. So if you're not needing the ported vacuum, you can plug off this hole. Um, the thread on it is actually tube thread, but if you use an eighth inch pipe bottom tap, you can screw it in there. The threads are almost identical, and then you can put an eighth inch pipe plug in it. And, and block that off if you don't need ported vacuum. Okay, this concludes the teardown. My next video will be the cleaning and the assembly. Thank you.